Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falk Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, a bit of a rematch here between Byun and Ragnarok from GSL Season 3 The Qualifiers here on Gresfin. Top left, doing a extractor trick from Ragnarok, and in the bottom right, it is Byun. There was an epic game played between these two players on the channel last week. If you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. It is incredible. It's a great ZVT. Unorthodox as well. So if you like unorthodox ZBTs that are good, ask me for a link if you need it. I'll respond to you. I read every single comment anyone ever leaves on this channel. And on the Brood War channel. So another extractor trick. So 14 hatch. After an extractor trick. Another extractor trick. What? I've never seen this before. I've seen this from Serral, but in the uh, ZVP matchup. Is this... Oh, it's a command center first play from Beyond. <laughs> oh, yeah, mix it in. Mix it in, Terran players against Zergs. Especially professional Zergs, because they do not drone scout. But if you do it every single time, you're known as the uh, command center first Terran, and they will pull first you every single time. So just mix it in. Just one racks expand, two racks expand. Command center first. Keep those Zergs on their toes. <laughs> I have no idea what the point of uh, Ragnarok's build is here today. When Serral did it, it was to get the hatch down early enough to not be blocked by the probe. But this is a Terran. Alright, man. No gas. Uh, maybe three hatch here? Are we accidentally... Trying to counter the command center first build from beyond Ragnarok. Six lings on the way. Still no gas. Man, there has got to be. There has absolutely got to be a third hatch coming up here soon. This is the weirdest friggin' thing. So, he makes more lings than he need against a traditional Rax opener. And look at this. Overlord says, oh, that was a CC first play. Uh, I guess these lings can maybe hammer on that command center a little bit, but they're not going to get much done. Okay, so third base at 220, but this is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit earlier than it normally is with a 16, 18, 17 build. See, queens are already out. I guess the other difference is you don't have any gas. I am not feeling about this good, like about uh, good about this for Ragnarok at all. And then Beyond says, "I'll just lift the supply depot, no problem. I've done that a billion times." There are Marines coming out of this barracks. There's just there's, there's nothing. There's nothing these Lings can do. Oh wow, four racks are opening here. Are we not going to repair this? Nah, who needs to? Ooh. Oh, he did need to. <laughs> Beyond, no! Beyond thought he could kill those links fast enough to save the supply depot, and then he couldn't. Oh, look at that spazzing up SCV up there. This SCV's like, wait, why don't these links have speed yet? We're three and a half minutes into this game. It's because Ragnarok doesn't believe in gas. Hold on. He does believe in gas at three and a half minutes. He's getting two of them at his natural bait. I don't know what this is. I have never seen a Zerg player open a game like this before. Uh, Usually, if you're going to go gasless, it's because you want to go a three hatch before pool or something crazy. Get your third hatch really fast. And then just not planning on being aggressive with your lings at all. But instead, he makes six lings. He gets a third base at about 230, which is pretty normal. He gets his queens out. He gets his gas at 330. And then tosses down a roach horn. Sure, man. Uh, just trying to keep Bjorn on his toes. Oh, Bjorn, on the other hand, is just like a billion marines. No factory, no starport, barely any gas for combat shield, right? And for, I guess, we get Stim? Mm, he's working on Stim. Certainly is. Stim and combat shield on the way. This is like a four racks, two base all in here from Yun. So this seems pretty bad if you're a Zerg player. Your lings don't have speed. You're not getting speed for your lings at all because you have a Roach Warren coming in. He's got, what, okay, 51 workers on three bases, got two gas at the natural, uh, one gas in the main. <sighs> sure, gonna have some roaches and some queens here, which is not pretty good against a 4 axe marine timing push here at about five minutes, which is a bit earlier than these things normally are. 
But this overlord saw this coming out. There's, yeah, he just fired up ten drones, or ten, not drones at all, actually. Ten roaches to try and hold this thing. And, uh, yeah, this is pretty scary stuff, man. Stim, roach down, roach down. <laughs> queen, not, didn't kill that queen. Roaches with a nice concave. Roaches are getting absolutely burned alive. How many stims do you have left? Not many because there's no... Oh, that was just bad. Oh, that's terrible pathing for Bion. He just lost four marines for no reason. Oh, wow. Ragnarok. <laughs> for all I say, I don't know what he's doing. He sh seems to know what he's doing. He had that roach warren down. He had the ability to make enough roaches to defend against a four-rax opener like he knew what was coming. But, uh, like... All he saw was the command center first, and two barracks being produced. I guess this right here, Tech Lab Reactor on two barracks, says, hmm. That is a bit earlier of marine pressure coming at me, I can tell. And maybe he's seen Bion do this command center first thing before, and he follows it up with a four racks follow. Maybe. Maybe Ragnarok is just a student of Bion in a way that I am not, unfortunately. Fourth base coming up down south from Ragnarok. Third base from Bion is landing in about six minutes. <laughs> Do you want to use a scan to kill this overseer? Go right ahead, Bion, says Ragnarok. I'll allow it. Alright, well, interesting. So we're going to Roach Ravager this thing, at least for now. An infestation pit is getting fired up. At 6.30, and now he's rushing to Hive. I just... What is happening? What is going on here with our friend Ragnarok? It's working... He's got a nice worker advantage here. He's got more army supply. He's getting upgrades for his roaches. They've got speed already. He's getting burrow and tunneling claws. Crazy, crazy stuff. Overseer comes in, says, what's up? Drops a change link, gets immediately murdered. So he sees a reactor factory and says, ooh, those could be Hellions or those could be Widow Mines and they are Widow Mines. Widow Mine's not as good against Roach Ravager as, as it is against Ling Bane, just because the Roaches and Ravagers kind of kind of sit back and fire on it. Ravagers especially will fire on Widow Mines quite nicely from distance. That range they have is real, real good. Cross Bile is good against Widow Mines too. So I'm curious to see if these Widow Mines get much value. Bane Ling Nest getting fired up. I just... Uh, sure. Ragnarok just seems to be kind of randomly building things. Oh, he's got a hive real fast, so I mean that makes sense. He's intentionally doing that, but the Veiling Nest coming in at seven and a half minutes is like, sure. Overlord scouts this drop. In revenge, the Marines kill the Overlord. Take that. How dare you? How dare you cause us these problems? Plus two ground carapace on the way for the Roaches and Ravagers. It's going to be a while, though. Armory on the way from beyond, so the Widow Mines have the permanent cloak. Clearing out some of this creep. This is a much different game than we got in game one between these two players on the channel a week ago. Again, if you, that, I got, gave that an epic tag. I don't know how many of you saw it, but boy golly, it was awesome. It was so awesome. Viper's on the way. Plus one missile attack coming in. So he is planning on kind of going Roach Ravager here to an extent anyway. And then the classic push at the third, drop in the main. That sort of thing. Ooh, Spore tries to reposition. Ooh, cancels the reposition and then dies. All right. Uh, killing some of these drones here. Just doing the old stutter step. Try hard walk. <laughs> I call it that. That's not fair. It is very, very good if you can stutter step well. And if you're an elite Terran player, of course you could do that. So three drones get killed. But man, fifth base is up here from Ragnarok. He's just fine. But guess who's pushing again with another ginormous army? It's a maxed out Zerg Force 199 to 165 here from Bion. A lot of that is drones from Ragnarok. Back it out, back it out. Centrifugal Hooks is just about done. Marauders being added into the comp here too against this Roach Ravager. Going to be much better than just Marines are. And the fifth base looks like it's going to die. There's really no saving it. Is this another drop? Yep, another drop at the third base. Gets rebuffed. Fifth hatch down. Bion. Bion is there. Bion is ready. Bion knows the way to defeat a Zerg player is by killing their hatcheries. That's one down. I don't know if firing on eggs is like the best way to do things. But yeah, Bion's got a fourth base rolling. That's a four basing Zerg. So this needs to be like a win and then a pushback. 
and then a counter from Ragnarok if he's going to win this thing. I really feel like it is. Four base to four base is not where you want to be. Income is favoring the Zerg quite nicely. Ooh, Widowmine. Oh, that's a huge hit. 13 kills on that Widowmine. It, oh, it fired on the Viper. And because it does splash damage to air and ground, it hit a bunch of Banelings. The Viper was hovering over to target fire those Banes. Nice parasitic bomb. Oops, secondary priority there from Bion is splitting those medevacs. Bion doing what Bion does and what Maru does and what all elite Terran players everywhere do is split your army up into two separate groups. Forcing the Zerg player to spawn properly to both of them. Ooh, eating some Banelings there, though. Marauders get in the front. Nice Banelings connections there, too. Ooh. Widow mine. Four kills. Army is like, do we keep pushing in? Do we? Where are these medevacs going? And the answer is somewhere. It doesn't matter because you can't kill us because you're roaches and ravagers. Lurker down on the way from the Zerg player. Uh, planetary fortress upgrade, upgrade here at the fourth from Bion and another base for expansion purposes. As is tradition for Terrans in this matchup. I mean, all matchups, really. All right. Once they start getting on a four bases, they start expanding pretty rapidly. Uh, if they can. All right. If they're just trying to stay alive. They're getting attacked every 36 seconds, then expanding a whole bunch is a lot harder to do. But if you're putting the pressure on the Zerg player, hey, hey, let's get that expansion power rocking and rolling. Rocking and a rolling, rocking and a rolling. Ba ba ram, ba 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 ram. Crucible's trying to hit those medevacs. Guys left behind as a result. Dead beyond. Yeah. I've said this a million times before, but Roach Ravager has a bit of a ceiling and a timer on its effectiveness and that is about 12 13 minutes we're coming up on it bane leagues oh there are so many marauders i'm just not convinced that banelings are the right answer here adrenal's done on these lings but they only have plus two attack and plus or plus two armor and plus one attack ragnarok trying to kind of double expand here <sighs> metavax dodging corrosive biles if you're going to use these lings, I appreciate... Okay, yeah, fine. We're going to have plus two attack and plus two... Or plus three, rather, ground a carapace for the Zerglings and the Banelings. And maybe some Ultras if we see those today, but probably not. They've kind of really fallen out of favor here. They're talking about doing things to make Ultras a little bit better in the next patch. I don't know. Nice drop high ground there at the fifth base. Young's been chased back. But look at the clock and look at... How Beyond's able to kind of stand here. There are Hydras. Roach, Hydra, Ravager, Bane. Ragnarok's almost experimenting with this matchup here. I don't, can't remember the last time I saw a Zerg player try this particular comp against somebody like Beyond. Seismic Spine's coming in. Looks like Ragnarok doesn't have any Lurkers yet. He's considering it. Ghosts have been added. We've seen those snipes. They're looking at nerfing Snipe a little bit too. Still should one-shot Banelings, I think. <laughs> but no longer one-shot Roaches or Zealots, I think is what they're planning on doing. Nothing's really set in stone yet. Ah, chasing Banelings, connecting off creep. Okay, well, anytime a ghost dies, that's a win. The question is, is it, it just EMP'd a bunch of Banelings? He's trying to get the Vipers, I think, but whiffed on that. Hey, even Bion can miss his EMPs, so if you're missing your EMPs, don't worry about it. Adaptive Talon's coming in, more Lings on the way. This group of Metavax is sort of just dead... I was going to say, it's just dead supply for Bjorn right now. Look at this. Fifth base rolling from Bjorn. He's just feeling good. I think Bjorn is on fire. This Bjorn is on fire. Oh, that ghost. Oh! What killed that ghost? I don't even know what killed that ghost. But see, Ragnarok's just been on the defensive for too long. Hey, these guys are back. Hey, guys. Uh, Yeah. Blinding Cloud plus Parasitic Bomb. Ow! Equals evacuation time. Yeah, this the longer the game goes on, the worse it's going to be, I think, for Ragnarok here. I mean, he's kind of just making Zerglings right now and Hydras, so he's not really relying on... Ooh, nice Medivac Snipe. Not really relying on Roaches and Ravagers to do the heavy lifting for him right now. He has lost a hatchery and killed six Medivacs, so... Beating a Terran in this matchup is about killing Medivacs, generally. The more Medivacs you can kill, the weaker the Terran is. There's only five on the field right now from Beyond. This is crazy. This is effectively Ling Bane Hydra, just with, like, Roaches added in and Ravagers, too? 
198 to 168 supply. Ragnar Rock is doing something in an era where Terran players are kind of kicking butt and taking names, especially somebody as good as Bion is. I did not expect Ragnarok to be playing this well. EMP again going for the Vipers. I think caught one of them, missed the other one. Take it. We'll take a 50% hit rate there. And then Ragnarok says, how about they just kill your entire planetary? Blinding Cloud on the planetary. Oh, did it win? It's still firing. What? No, that should not happen. Quick, focus the planetary. There we go. Planetary dies and Ragnarok pulls back. Oh, kills two Metavacs with two Corrosive Piles. That was amazing. More maybe lucky than anything else because, I mean, it just kind of requires Beyond to not have the APM required to move those Metavacs out of the way. But hey, it worked, man. Oh, he is working on plus three missile attack. So hold on, hold on. Beyond's here on four bases. His fifth base just died. Ragnarok has kind of held on to his fifth and sixth bases. So maybe it's working out for the lower ranked Zerg player here. He is Korean. But, you know, he's not dark or rogue. It's a bit of a shame, really, but it's not his fault. Get good scrub, I guess. Look at this little roach harass behind this mineral line against this planetary. That's hilarious. SCVs are dying, but uh, at this stage, beyond I it's not going to worry about losing five SCVs. Just like I'm guaranteed sure Ragnarok would not care about losing five drones right now. He's fine. He's got 86 workers. He can replace those immediately if necessary. It'll be it'll be totally great. Changelings die in mass. It's <laughs> synchronized death animations. Beyond wants to get a sixth base up here, but this one Zergling, who has Burrow, mind you, should have been Burrowed. Timeout. Did he finish researching Burrow? Uh, no. Oh, he was going to go tunneling claws and burrow. He canceled those upgrades. Interesting. All right, this base is back. Mm, tries to kill it. No, tries to come into the third base of Bion. Couple siege tanks back there. There are no vipers with his army, so no blinding cloud on those tanks uh, is available. And Ragnarok has to retreat. Full on retreat again. Mm, spires on the way. Intriguing. We've seen Broodlords be used. God, those Ravagers. I think they just were intended to die. Intended to die there. They were left alone. So, I mean, Ragnarok is solidified. He spent the first 10 minutes of this game being completely under attack by Bjorn nonstop, and he's alive, which is more than could be said for a lot of Zerg players that Bjorn has done that to. So, I, I don't know. I feel like Ragnarok is going up in esteem in my eyes, and I think a lot of other StarCraft II fans' eyes are also being like, Ragnarok, are you for real? Okay, coming in again, blinding cloud EMP caught on those Vipers, but they're alive. That's all that really matters. Tanks dying, lifting the orbital. That's what planetaries cannot do. Killed three SCVs. Couple tanks went down. Maybe some ghosts. This planetary is dead. These are plus three veinlings, sir. Yo, planetary down. But guess who has additional command centers ready for just such an occurrence? Bion totally does. That's the frustrating thing about playing a Terran in late game is you just wasted how many veinlings? Well, you didn't waste them. The base died. But how many veinlings died to kill this? And it's like... 15 or 20 and it's like, oh well there's another base there in less time than it takes to rebuild a new one hmm. yeah look at this greater spire and corruptors being added ragnarok says you know what's good brood lords brood lords are good Ugh, we don't mind trying to save that or oh, forcing a liftoff up there anyway lings this is, i've done this with my lings like a giant army chasing him and i'm like run and then he burrows and he's like wait hold on he burrows that group. They die. These guys get spotted. Burrow. I think they're going to get spotted, too. Beyond, oh, Beyond's like, I don't know, do I want to burn another scan? It's a planetary protecting this against two banelings anyway. Like, unless they run up into here. Beyond's kind of staying home, though. So, brr. Look at this base, though. Income. Largely, I don't know. Larger periods of time. F absolutely helping the Zerg player out here. Favoring him. Infernal Pre-Igniter on the way, and Thor's being added. I think he knows about the Broodlords. Holy, 11 Broodlords. 11 once. I think that's 11 in Spanish. I learned how to count to 20 in Spanish like 25 years ago. 
Maybe even longer. But guess what? Onse. Here they are. Yeah, Bjorn's adding Thors because he knows about the Brewboards. He wouldn't. There's no reason to have Thors against a Hydroling Bane Viper army. They're bad for cost. But against Broodlords, they have that anti-air attack that's super rangy and does single target, tons of damage, ignores a lot of the armor the Broodlords naturally have. Such a great Broodlords parking spot, though. Oh, man. Just shelling it down. La 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 la. Look at all this tank fire on SCVs. Losing 10 SCVs might be a bit of a problem here from Beyond. Maybe a spot, a spot of trouble here for Beyond. Missile turret died, and oh gosh. Ah, there goes the sniper Roonies, though. It's like five Root Lords just died. The Thors are down, the Ghosts are down, the tanks are down. Brew Lords continue to fire and eating some Thor shots. No, wrong kind of Thor attack. Change it over to single target. Bjorn, this base is somehow alive, but the sheer damage output of Hydras is going to kill this. Hang on. He just called down some mules for extra repair. Never mind. Ho, ho, ho. Woo. He just called like down six mules, but yo, 27. 27 SCVs killed. It is highly favoring Ragnarok here in overall income, but he's about out of spaces. He needs this base or he needs this base if he's going to win this thing, and probably both. I think the map is split equally in half right now. And wait, hold on. So one of these is Beyond's, one of these is Ragnarok's. So if Ragnarok could take both bases, he's got this thing. Well, he's got a better chance anyway, but if he can't, he's in trouble. Well, I don't know. The cost efficiency of these Broodlords is actually kind of amazing. I mean, how many died to the snipes thus far? Only two? Oh, man. A lot of the Broodlords took snipes, but very few of them actually died. They stack. It's kind of hard to tell how many they are just glancing. Golly. At seven more SCVs die. Beyond's at 46 workers. Ragnarok says, all right, round two. Let's try this again, maybe? Could we jump on those Thors? Ah, Ghost taking one Broodlord down. This is so tenuous from Beyond right now. He's effectively mining on three bases, which is good. But I mean, Zerg player's on one, two, not really. He's on three, so whew, this game is getting pretty intense. Beyond reclaims this high ground. Wait, no. He's been here the whole time. He went down here for a minute, but he's back, is what I guess that is. So, yeah, reclaim works. Banelings fight against the Hellbats here, but bad against tanks and Thors and ghosts, really. I don't know if this many Banelings is actually good against this comp. There aren't that many Hellbats. I almost feel like you just go kind of flood that with mass ling, and the Hellbats can't really handle it. He's making infestors. He's throwing up nine more Broodlords. Nine more brood lords. Trying to expand down here, but like, nah. Bion says, "No, this is my side of the map. You don't get to have a hatchery." And the Hellbats are doing some damage, but the floor is really cranking away there. Yeah, honestly, more lings. There are like, okay, there's like six Hellbats here. This is an interesting little spread. Infester, gonna toss down, ah, oh, gonna catch an EMP. I don't know what you're trying to do, Infester, but it did not work. There are so many Broodlords here. Ah, just crush everything with main legs. Who cares if there's Thors and tanks? We're just gonna kill everybody. Look at him saving Banelings in situations where they're not good. Pulls them back and says, there's no reason to just wander them into death. That Thor being alive is massive. 41 HP. Chasing, chasing, chasing. Onto creep is too scary, says Bion. I don't like it. I don't like chasing onto creep here. He's got a bank. Both players have about a 2,000 mineral bank and 500 to 1,000 in gas in the bank. My gosh. It's going to be the second epic game in a row between these two players. Who's... The Again, in an era where Terran players are doing great, even against Zergs, who is Ragnarok that is pushing Beyond so hard? I guess he's doing weird stuff. Ooh. Maybe battle cruisers in our future. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps.
Mm. Free Viper. All right. Music kicking in. Snipe, 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 snipe. Nope. Oh, gosh, another humongous assault from Ragnarok. Again, I think he's overmaking Banes here. Look at the split. Just absolutely shutting those Banelings down. Transfuse the Broodlords. Give them more time to stay alive and wreak havoc and rain down fire. Queens taking some shots. Nice fungal. Okay. It's a little bit of extra damage. We're looking at nerfing fungal in the next patch. Ghost standing in. Ghost death sounds, though. Oh, this game's insane. Is he... Wait. Does he not have personal cloaking yet? Why do the ghosts not have personal cloaking yet? See Zerglings. Zerglings. In amongst with your broodlings. Why are there so many Banes still? Uh, Ragnarok says, Shut up, Falcon. I got this. Banelings. I guess the stuff is clumped up. Once again, he's just trying to be like, I don't just want to run 10 Banelings into a Thor. That's terrible. Oh, but the Hydras against Thors are way good. But the Snipes will turn against you eventually. Did all the Broodlords just die? Like, in the last 10 seconds? Because the Thors... Oh, yeah. The Thors are just, like, standing in here. Bam. Broodlords are gone, sir. That is uh, 20 Broodlords that have died. Holy smokes. Suddenly, Beyond's up 171 to 141 supply. That's the thing about Broodlords, man. If you don't... If you don't babysit them and watch them every second and try to micro them perfectly, they will die to Thors and ghosts and all sorts of bad stuff. Oh, wow. I think Bjorn just did this. I think this counterattack is too strong, and it is! Bjorn is our winner. Holy smokes. What a fantastic epic level ZVT that was. The Broodlords. Trying to get it done, but the response to the Broodlords is exactly whatever, right? What every single Terran player needs to do is going to be adding Thors into your comp, making sure you have ghosts, because of course you have ghosts. Why would you not have ghosts? And then just, yeah, if the Broodlords aren't perfectly taken care of over the course of, you know, a 10 second window, just kill them all. He went from like 20 Broodlords to zero pretty quickly. So here's our group. I guess he has nine remaining. Fair enough. And then it's just... They're just... Yeah, they just wandered into range of these stores. They just didn't care. They didn't care about the stuff chewing on them. They were there to soak up damage and kill Broodlords. And that's exactly what they did. And Ragnarok at no point backed those Broodlords out. He committed way too fully. I do think maybe the clutch moment of this game was Hydra's coming in to finish off that planetary and Beyond calling down like six mules and repairing it in time. If Beyond doesn't have this base, I think he dies. I really do. That's how close this game was. And again, I, I know there were Hellbats, but... Fewer Banelings, more Zerglings is what I would say. Fully upgraded Cracklings here. It's not like there were ten Hellbats just ready to roast the crap out of your lings. Yeah, just so many Banelings. And so many Banelings just kind of... 294 Banelings died. That is so many Banelings. And too many times. Banelings are just kind of like... Nah, 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 trying to chase... Trying to get a moderate clump of ghosts. Or just trying not to explode all on a single Thor. Beyond splitting perfectly. Making sure his group's... You know, his army's just not a giant ball. He's making sure that the Thors are splitting as well as their fat butts can. And it was great. It was just gorgeous. Dude, look at this resources lost. 73,000 to 45,000 in favor of our Terran player. Sure, he lost six Thors and 61 SCVs and two planetaries, but the cost effectiveness of this Terran ball of death, the ghosts especially, very, very good. How many ghosts died? 19. He had nine remaining. Ghosts are so important. A couple fungals there, but not really much infester play. I just don't know if the Roaches and Ravagers really got done what they needed to do. Just kind of sticking with a Ling Bane Hydra approach. It just seems to be the thing to do here. But, you know, Ragnarok is a much, much, much better player than I am. Man. Amazing. 
absolutely, truly incredible ZVT. Another epic game. <sighs> All right, man. So nice job, Beyond, getting the win here, getting him one step closer to qualifying for GSL Season 3. Love it. Love it. Love it. And that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and an epic ZVT. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. <laughs>